uh, we uh, were able to draw a good understanding of what are the uh, data database types, the local, the offline, the online, and uh, the use of the APIs, uh, the benefit that we can get because of using a database or referring to database remotely using uh, APIs. This is actually by nature of the uh, .NET, uh, let's say, environment, the SQL Server and the uh, APIs that can connect it to the SQL Server. Uh, but this is actually a, a positive feature that we are having the benefit. Um, the last thing, actually, this was, I believe that this was uh, the last thing we uh, were, were, were discussing, which is the uh, use of the SSDT and the rich experience we are going to get through the API, SSDT. Remember, the SSDT is not the unique, but this is actually having a full unit describing uh, describing it uh, on our reference, on our book. But we uh, discussed also uh, the uh, Visual Studio and the SSMS as uh, uh, dedicated APIs also. The SSMS is one of the SQL Server Management Studio, is one of the uh, common APIs that they can uh, they come installed with the, uh, the SQL Server. Visual Studio is a third party application, it's from Microsoft also. but all of them, they are uh, described in this book and they are uh, having the chance to give us uh, the potential to get connected to the SQL Server remotely, usually. Yeah, we saw examples of the TSQL and uh, we uh, knew the capabilities of the SQL, what are the things that can do. We solved this task and we saw this is the solution. Uh, we uh, reached to create a view, view that has only one statement and the statement is to tackle the relationship between two entities, customers, orders. Uh, then after actually we had another example and we said that it is the uh, role of the SSDT to generate the chain script once we are uh, finishing the work from the uh, offline or the local line local database into the online database so it is the role of the SSDT to check uh, the uh, availability of updates by generating the chain script and uh, pushing the updates into the uh, online one online database or to the online project uh, in general uh, dealing with the, the uh, solutions usually not uh, mandatory for us to uh, generate codes like that, but it depends on the scenario usually. But remember that there is actually a, a graphical view usually. This is the benefit of the .NET framework. The .NET framework, it helps us to refer to the graphical and the uh, designers in order to achieve our uh, realizations from within the API or from within the uh, SQL Server, the DBMS. is actually sort of an example transmitting queries to the uh, SQL Server through the SSDT query builder. Query builder. Great. Uh, so uh, from here we continue. From here we uh, continue. Uh, so the TSQL it's an enhancement to the use of the. Uh, the SQL only, TSQL, the transact SQL is an enhancement to the SQL. We are not bringing in new queries, syntaxes. No, we are uh, uh, using the SQL, uh, the normal, the habitual uh, SQL we know in prior, but differently. We are, when we define, for example, let me come back a little bit. When we uh, define this uh, view here, this is not an SQL query. This is actually a sort of a body in which or within which we are passing a query so this is another view via which we see the sql queries being submitted and transmitted to the uh, dbms in question so the tsql it is an enhancement it is an amelioration it's a, a tool via which we write sql queries differently still we deal only with the use of the sql queries to interrogate a database And uh, the uh, SSDT, this API, actually, it is going to <coughs> help us, sorry, to help us uh, implement our solutions using the TSQL or simple SQL queries only. But even though this SSDT itself, it is going to help us work with the three database types, the offline, the local, and the online one. So <coughs> all the databases, they are actually... Uh, 
we have the potential to use them and to work with them and to um, let's say deploy them uh, using the SSDT, the same SSDT. No need to change. For example, if I'd like to go from an online, sorry, from an yes, let's say from an online to an offline for uh, let's say a test, we can use the same SSDT. We don't move from our framework, from our environment. We we remain in the same tool, the same environment. And the vice versa, if we'd like to go from the uh, offline or the local DB into an online one, still we use the same SSDT, the same API, which is actually describing, uh, which is actually providing all the features we need, or the tools we need to do this uh, move from the offline, for example, to the online, as an example only. The, uh, the uh, schemas is another context, the schemas, is another uh, context that helps us to secure at the same time uh, to segregate the work inside a, a project because don't uh, expect that to create uh, a database or a project based on a database the use of a database inside the sql server that has only one table or two tables or three tables do not expect it like that actually enormous projects they are to refer to the sql server otherwise I would like to do the job in a simple office document word or excel that's it because uh, because the management of the data, it is not easy to do it in Word or in Excel if it is actually enormous. You have to know what does it mean enormous. Here we talk about big data. So the SQL Server as a DBMS, it is for such role. And to facilitate this task, we refer to the use of schemas. So we have, for example, 1,000 schedule for workers only, related to workers uh, stuff. And hundreds uh, schedule, a table, is for, uh, for, for let's say, the uh, HR department. Another 50 schedules are for the finance department, and so on. So schemas, they would segregate the work inside the databases from within the DBMS, from within, in our example, the SQL Server. At the same time, at the same time, those schemas, they will not get us out of the database. We will remain inside, inside the same database, and they would bear, they would support similarities in between namespaces it means if actually you, you are using your project in a namespace named ABCD if you'd like to change from a computer to another and use the same namespace ABCD they will actually be uh, integrated and it would be accepted the new namespace would be accepted and the database with, this, with the current architecture or the current schema would run effectively the default namespace given to all schemas actually the default one the default one is database owner dbo dbo database owner any questions please no mr shika okay great we continue Uh, working with offline database still is possible, as I said. This is a view of the Solution Explorer where we see inside the uh, SSDT, where we see a, an offline database. See the icon and see the red tick here, uh, left side. This is an offline one. So the tables here, they are from an offline database. So we can use the same SSDT to deal with the offline database. Yeah. <clears throat> So we will not change the SSDT, we will not install another SSDT, we will not use a different computer, no. <coughs> Good explanation of uh, how to generate the uh, chain script is by just creating two snapshots before and after the update. Actually, the comparison, the task to be done by the, snap, by the chain script is to generate a snapshot as a duck pack source it be it would be actually stored from within the uh, the the API the SSDT in question here, uh, and after the updates and after all the work, the second snapshot would be generated. The second duck pack file would be generated. Then a comparison. Then a comparison. If there are modifications, we don't say there are additions here. We say there are modifications because because updates might be to delete a table. Updates might be to change the architecture of a table, delete a column or add a column uh, this way. So if there are modifications, differences, 
immediately and update has to be launched. So before the work, after the work, two snapshots. If there are modifications, there will be an update. And remember, the updates here, and to take a uh, snapshot, <coughs> uh, uh, to use them for an update, the update would be actually only the list of queries that they are either create queries or alter queries. We saw that Sharahna had a couple. He's not new to us. The table design actually is a view where we can actually refer to the TSQL actually here actually script wise or design wise to generate a table to generate an entity. This is in an offline mode or whatever, even if it is actually in an online mode, so we can do that. But here, here we are not doing, um, remember, there is just one, no, it's just a hint from our book is that we are not required to do only a create or an alter here. No, we are not making an update. We are not making an update. So all the queries can be actually accepted at this level. The update on the update phase only, we have to talk about the alter and the create only. But otherwise, no, we have, to, we can actually, we have the chance to deal with all sorts of commands and queries. <clears throat> Third database that we are introducing here is the local database, the local DB. The local DB is not the one that we created through the Express, the SQL Express. It is one to be generated, the local DB, the local DB. It is to be generated by a dedicated SQL Server distribution, which is said SQL Server Express local DB. It is a full distribution. It is a full type of a database. It is not to be generated by the regular SQL Express, the one we download from the Moodle, in our case, in our university here, and we install. It is the SQL Express. But this is not the one meant to help us work with the local DB. It is another distribution. It's another SQL Server. It is named SQL Server Express Local DB. It is one feature that we have actually to install in order to have the chance to work with a local DB type. Yes, great. So working with uh, working with the local DB, actually we might have actually more than one instance one at the same time. So see here, this is an instance number one. This is a second instance here, and we might have a third, fourth, and so on. So those are instances of databases, instances of users. This is a session to open the list of databases. This is another session to open the list of databases and so on. If you can see, if you can note very well, if you can note very well here, see the icon here. See the icon here in this level, in this level here, the icon. It is a DB. It is the yellow one plus a white paper. But here, no, here no, it's a server. This is a server. This is a server. This is an example of a local DB. This is a local DB. These are actually a database inside the normal, the current computation inside the case. This is an online database. The icon is different. Any questions here? As per the description here. Great, great. The local DB has three entities. The online DB still does not have it. It has only two entities. This is a an local and this is an online. So the online did not update yet. But this one is having all the work because it's local. Example of uh, generating a view now, just a real case. Uh, so, as per our book request, we are required to use the local DB, in particular, to generate an, a view for a person or another. 
Okay, uh, uh, the name he's actually is given uh, view customer order summary. It is exactly the, the example we saw earlier in this unit. It is exactly discussing, discussed here uh, in this scenario to see the customer's orders. Each customer, what orders he did or he passed. It is the same here. The result is here now. So we are having a view to do so. The view is the view is actually generated by the keyword create view right? and they give the name here this vw customer order summary it's user defined you can write whatever you want to describe your view name uh, actually here was schema uh, uh, enabled or binned in here actually it's one of the features that you can not uh, say but as it starts here as it starts here the content is the content is the following it's one query select we are going to select customer details and all the details within uh, let's say actually uh, uh, an inner join left join here left join here uh, we have a group by we have a group by so simple each customer is going to see what the orders he passed grouped by the customer id and its details whatever the rank or whatever is an example only. I give you the chance to walk to to walk through this uh, script, and you ask me if uh, you have any questions. This is a simple select. So this is a simple and current select. This is a simple select. Actually, uh, I give you just a few seconds to uh, view. Just few seconds. I need questions from you. Interruptions. So, so any questions, please? Is it clear? Juhain, any questions, Juhain? Jahina, sorry. Okay. Let's continue. So it's simple. Actually, it's not something actually um, mysterious. It's simple. You just use the keywords, and here the body of the select is uh, it's a simple select. We are not bringing new here. The new is here. It's in this create only. All the content from the select, all of it, is a simple select. But here, only you have to know that we are using a body where we are integrating uh, um, a query. The query is just to make a merge, to make a, a join uh, in between two entities, the customer's entity and the uh, uh, orders entity to see each customer's orders what are they great great uh, next uh, part of this uh, unit is uh, the context of the refactoring or the renaming the refactoring or the renaming entities inside or objects in plural or an abstract sorry an abstract and in plural objects inside within a database or given database from within a dbms the case is the sql server uh, they are actually question of being renamed again and again and again within the work of the project during the during the, the work of the project there are constraints here there are constraints means um, 
we have to follow the rules in order to be able to refactor an entity or to refactor uh, 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 an object in general. What does it mean? It means if we are having actually two entities or two objects, they are built with a relationship. We have a constraint. We have a cascade, uh, let's say, a referential integrity that relates both of them. We cannot rename one before we uh, do the update in the second. What does it mean? It means actually because an entity that has uh, a referential integrity with entity number two, the primary key from entity one is manifested in the other one, the second one, for example. Actually, after considering the cardinality. So, the primary key has a name. See the, here, the, the, the nomination of the foreign key and the primary key. It is to be following a syntax. So, table name and uh, FK to say that it is foreign key. So, this is actually a constraint that we have to consider. But, but in all okay, in, okay, in, in cases, the SQL server using the SSDT can enhance us, actually can help us doing so. So, the context of the refactor is not forbidden. It is allowed and it is to be actually enhanced. This is uh, an approach that you can go for once needed renaming or refactoring. <clears throat> okay, uh, one of the uh, very famous uh, contexts, actually it's almost the uh, last uh, of this, the, uh, the termination of this unit, the context of the debugging, debugging, what does it mean actually uh, deploying, we are going to deploy and see what are the uh, uh, constraints. Uh, what are the considerations? Are there any exceptions we have to handle? Things like that. So, uh, a question that we may actually uh, impose clearly are you in, uh, in the habit of running a new and tested code on live databases? So, understanding this question, can you pose, uh, can, actually, can uh, pose you to understand what does it mean to debug? means you have to test before te before deploying your solution to the live one. Means you have to go for debugging, testing uh, if there are any exceptions or any uh, issues with the uh, solution you uh, implement or develop before sending it to the live environment. Actually, it is a it, it is a time consuming yes, but you can do it. It is a time consuming. It is a time process time-based process but, process, but you have to do it to avoid issues because you have an issue in an online, sorry, in an offline or in a local DB, it's better than to have it on the online database because if you have a trouble or an issue or a bug or a stack in an online database, this causes the service to stop. You are losing your customers, you are losing your service and, and so on. Any questions here, please, before we finish with this last uh, given? Any questions, especially regarding the context of the debugging? Muhammad Ali, sorry, not Muhammad Ali. Let me... Afra, any questions regarding the, 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 the debugging? Afra? Hello, Mr. Jahina, any questions regarding the debugging, Jahina? No, Mr. Star. Okay, yes, Rudina. Uh, repeat the before slide. Before the slide. You mean this one? The context of refactoring? No, oh, the next one. The debugging. Yeah, actually, uh, we have three types of databases. We said that we have the local, the offline, and the online. Database, there are three types. Okay, we are going to let's have a lab on the database security. We'll install the SQL server and we'll work. Which database, not the DBMS, not the database management system, which database we're going to use? Is it an offline? Is it a local? Is it an online? Okay, the online it is the deployed one, it is the one that runs with the project that the customers are using, the clients are, are, are viewing. So, since we are developing and we are implementing still, 
we will use either offline database or local DB, local database. Good. So, in all cases, in all cases, this is a good behavior. Why? Because we do not have to deploy all what we need to the online database immediately. We have to test it to see if there are any issues, if there are any exception, and the exception is runtime errors, runtime errors. So we have to debug that during the test phase, during the implementation phase, during the development phase, not the online phase. So to debug and to test, it is during the implementation or the development. And she, if not, in she, ليس if not, تنفيذ if not, العمل في ال في القاعدة على على الخط يعني لما يكون خلاص شغال مع الحرفاء. No, it has to be with the offline or with the local DB to avoid errors and mistakes. Debug and test it. Good. The compare the comparison of schemas here. The last, uh, the last uh, preview. Any questions uh, before I pass regarding the refactoring or any other th other thing in, the, in this unit? Any questions you have? No, Mister. Okay. Since uh, no, ex explain me this slide, please. Can you just give me an explanation of what does this uh, schema comparison means without reading even? If I tell you I'm going to compare schemas, what for? Are you with me or not? Yes, with you. Yes. Regardless. Okay. Yes, Actually, sure. uh, in final point, he, I asked you this question and I give you this uh, short time of silence. Why? Because the chain script and the comparison of schemas, they are a very re relative and uh, proportional, uh, let's say, um, tasks, activities to do. Uh, just comparing a schema wide, just to generate a chain script. We make a, a schema comparison to generate a chain script. And to generate a chain script, why? To make an update to the online database. This is based on the use of the local db or the offline db uh, content technically we can do that and, uh, using the graphical view or using the script graphically we can actually refer to the keyboard uh, shortcuts or we can use the mouse or uh, mouse commands or things like that or we may write the code to generate a schema to generate a chain script so to compare schemas and generate a change script Unit number one has been terminated. If you have any questions, uh, please raise them regarding this uh, unit number one, which is uh, the deal of the deal with the uh, SSDTs, the APIs. Otherwise, let's pass to the uh, unit number. Do you have any questions? No, I'm stuck. Great. So uh, I believe you're able to see the unit number two. I just uh, swapped the window. Uh, here we are going to define clearly the, the TSQL potential. We are going to see what the TSQL has brought to us in order to uh, utilize him and why he is successful so far. Uh, and what are the enhancements he's bringing to uh, life. Uh, this is actually, uh, for the first view, we are going to see the security measures this TSQL is imposing to block or deny clever attacks, clever hacks. So, as per first understanding, the TSQL is not a SQL based it's not a sql query it's a structure it's a transactional process to help us secure against dedicated threats index of this uh, unit immediately 
We are going to see them as we go the details. Don't worry. The uh, view of this, uh, the view of this uh, unit, the unit number two, the work and the enhancements that the TSQL brings, is a context of secure code. It means we are going to write solutions, queries, whatever interrogations we are going to pass to uh, to uh, an SQL server, a database management system, but in a secure mode. We are going to pass queries. No, those queries they have to be secured. So we are building a secure code to interrogate the DBMS in question, which is the SQL server. Secure code. Uh, this secure code and actually it has to be efficient enough. Gives us actually uh, security features to say that it is secure code. Otherwise, it is simple code. If it does not enhance security features. It would not be uh, said as a secure code, or it is passing queries to the SQL server in a secure mode. So, information assurance, information assurance that uh, actually manif is manifest through the trust. Yes, I trust that the data is valid. I trust that the output is correct. I trust that the system will not fail. This is an information assurance process. It is supported and guaranteed, and enhanced due to the use of the TSQL only. Due to the use of the TSQL only. TSQL, actually, there are so many terminologies and techniques and functions and procedures and new field of study we're going to see. Starting with the terminology list, we are going to see a group of terminologies that this uh, unit is shown to us. TSQL is not new. We knew it since the unit number one. Transact SQL. It's a structure via which we cover or isolate queries from being interfered. We use them to uh, create a body, the TSQL, to create a body where we pass SQL queries, SQL queries only. Common language runtime, common language runtime, the CLR, the common language runtime, they are server-side procedures, server-side stored procedures that they are actually enhanced by the DBMS in question to help us store group of procedures to do what? To yes, uh, just uh, fulfill or achieve a function we need, a procedure we, we need, and we're going to use it again and again and again and again. So we, we create this procedure restored, but it has to be server-side. It has to be server-side. Why it has to be server-side? Because as per the, literally the name uh, is saying, common language runtime. Something written, it would be actually common for different tasks. Common, yeah, but at runtime. We are not going to use it during the uh, test, during the debugging, during the, uh, maybe the deployment. No, it has to be only called, called during runtime. Its use would be manifested only during the runtime, common language runtime, CLR. It's a sort of a procedure, stored procedure. We define the stored procedure unit number one, but it is a server side. Event handlers and triggers, they are actually features that the TSQL do support and do, uh, let's say, bring them to life that we can actually uh, refer to, to automate processes. In the sense of we are going to uh, launch a process within a project lifetime, within a project lifetime. And we need the thing to be autonomous. So triggers will be in action, triggers. A trigger, it's a cause to push a process to run. It's a cause. But the trigger, it has to be actually from the system side or the project side. Or the, it is an event, something like that. Uh, I'm going to take the attendance, please, if you hear your name, I'll just take yes. I'm going to stop at this level. Um, meanwhile, do we have...